Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. The Cold War style trade standoff between the United States and China is deepening, it is accelerating and it is getting quite ugly actually, as the United States is desperately attempting to create obstacles for China's economic rise. AI chips are becoming central in negotiations and are increasingly being used as leverage. At the center of this is NVIDIA's H200 artificial intelligence chip. Now, H200 is a processor that only recently received clearance from the United States government to be exported to China. And guess what? China now says, we don't need it. We don't want the chip. And it is reportedly being stopped. The shipments of H200s are being stopped at the Chinese border. According to a report by the Financial Times, Chinese customs officials have blocked shipments of NVIDIA's H200 from entering the country, even as US authorities had already approved the export of the chips to China. And the implications are truly significant. Parts suppliers for the H200 have already put production on hold and uh, they are unsure whether the chips that they're helping to build will be allowed into one of Nvidia's most important markets into China. This is not a minor product that we're talking about. The H200 is Nvidia's second most powerful AI chip. So this is very, very important. It is actually designed for advanced uh, machine learning and for high performance computing tasks. Uh, Chinese companies were expected to place orders exceeding 1 million units. So this is going to, uh, this was going to be a really, really big revenue stream for Nvidia. And from what it appears, not anymore. According to Nvidia, suppliers had been running around the clock preparing for shipments that uh, could have begun as early as March. And right now, suddenly everything is frozen, completely frozen. This may be due to China's pursuit of technological independence and uh, reduced reliance on the United States, uh, which is its direct peer competitor. I've discussed that previously in many videos here on my channel. What makes this situation, however, especially confusing and unusual is that uh, Chinese authorities have not clearly explained what is happening? Customs agents were reportedly told that the H200 chips were not permitted to enter China, but uh, no formal ban has been announced yet. No timeline was provided, no clarification on whether this is a permanent restriction or just a temporary pause, a temporary hiccup. So this ambiguity may actually be the point. Uh, it may be part of the game. As The Guardian here writes, the H200 has become one of the most sensitive flashpoints in the United States-China relations because it sits at the intersection of economic power, technological leadership, and national security. China wants access to the most advanced AI hardware available. Of course, it has a vast and, and, and very impressive production of its own chips, but the United States also wants to protect its technological edge while still allowing American companies to profit profit. NVIDIA, of course, for on its part, wants to sell its chips to whoever is willing to buy them because it wants to profit. It wants to make its uh, shareholders happy, but uh, geopolitics here gets in the way. From Beijing's perspective, blocking the H200 could actually serve several purposes. One possibility is industrial policy. By restricting imports of top-tier U.S. chips, China may be trying to force domestic firms to accelerate development of domestic alternatives. And uh, as I mentioned in my previous videos, Chinese policymakers have spoken openly for, uh, for, for several months now about reducing dependence on foreign semiconductors. Cutting off access to NVIDIA's most advanced processors would certainly create pressure uh, domestically within China to innovate, um, especially if you throw in subsidies. Of course, this is, uh, this is of course, a smart strategy and might be the route that uh, the uh, Chinese government is willing to take. Now, another possibility is that this is not a ban at all, but leverage. By halting imports without formally, officially announcing a prohibition, Beijing keeps its options
options open. And the move could be a bargaining chip uh, in uh, broader negotiations with Washington, which of course we know that the trade war continues. It's, it, it, there are ups and downs at this point. It's, it's sort of on hold, but of course negotiations are going to resume. And then there is the possibility that Chinese authorities themselves are still undecided. AI chips like the H200 are not just commercial products. They are considered to be dual use technologies that may be used for civilian and for military purposes. And so they can power large language models and uh, they can power commercial data centers, but at the same time, they can also be used and applied to military systems, to surveillance and advanced weapons development. So allowing widespread imports of such chips may conflict with China's own internal security calculations and architecture texture or its uh, long-term strategic goals. What makes this episode even more interesting and I would say convoluted is the role of the United States in this episode. The Trump administration reportedly cleared the H-200 for export to China despite its advanced capabilities under a framework that would allow the United States government to take a significant share of the profits, up to 25%. NVIDIA was fine with it, and NVIDIA actually appeared to, uh, to, to praise that policy. The chips are designed in the United States, they are manufactured in Taiwan, and they are intended for Chinese customers. So that's how it works. But then actually came another twist to the story. Instead of shipping the completed chips directly from Taiwan to China, which arguably would make the most sense, the United States government um, actually required that they must first pass through a US laboratory for testing. So the detour has a very specific consequence. It allows Washington to impose a 25% tariff on these chips as they pass through U.S. territory. The same tariff has been applied to other AI chips as well, AMD chips, if I'm not mistaken. So it has been previously implemented. In effect, the United States is saying here, yes, you can sell advanced AI chips to China, but only if we get a cut and only under conditions that we control and the conditions that we set. So from a business perspective, from a purely transactional perspective, this raises costs and uh, of course it complicates logistics. From a geopolitical perspective, it uh, underscores how trade, technology and uh, national security matters have become inseparable and uh, definitely under Trump, uh, under Trump, all of this is, is conflated into one big mess, effectively. China's apparent move to uh, block the chips adds yet another layer to this debate. For NVIDIA, the stakes are very, very high. The stakes are enormous. China has been one of its largest markets and Nvidia certainly wants access to Chinese markets. And demand for AI accelerators continues to surge worldwide. And this means that um, a longer disruption could negatively impact its supply chain. Uh, it could affect suppliers that Nvidia has. Um, it could impact manufacturing schedules and revenue forecasts. And of course, it would upset its shareholders. So NVIDIA cannot afford to lose uh, China as a customer. But for parts makers who have already paused production, uncertainty translates directly into financial risk. So uh, the pressure is definitely mounting. Now, if we zoom out, this episode is a textbook example of how fragmented the global technology system has become and of how fragmented the trade framework globally has become. Chips are no longer just components, they are actually instruments of power as the global AI race intensifies. I will definitely keep you posted on Substack, on Patreon, as well as on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this quick episode was interesting. Support my work if you have already. I appreciate every single one of you who has become a paid subscriber on YouTube, on Substack, and Patreon. Thank you so much for your support. Enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, I will see you back here tomorrow. Bye for now.